Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Prince Francis Origa. I'm the Registrar CEO of the Institute for Humanitarian Studies and Social Development in Nigeria. Uh, I also represent the UN Institute for Training and Research in the Partnership we are doing in Nigeria. I'm here, of course, uh, with my team members. Seated by my right is the is Ambassador Lugumi, who is the alumni president of the Institute nationwide. And I also have the my president in council, who is the chairman of the council, His Excellency Ambassador Danobo Bambina Ibrahim. He's our host in Castina State. And I must say, uh, it's a pleasure coming to Castina State. Uh, this visit is strategic. Strategic in the sense that, uh, uh, aside from the fact that our president is uh, from Castina State, and the former president and chairman of the governing council, uh, that is uh, His Excellency Senator Jenai Kemachuku, Thomas Sanda Machuku also happened to be partly a son of this state too. So uh, it's it's you be I think history will not forgive us if we are doing anything in other states we didn't come to this state. Humanitarianism is what we are taking the message we are taking to all the states in Nigeria and uh, in the northern state we want Castina states to be the role model states and are the strategic uh, driving uh, center of the message. And what is the message? The message is building partnership that can help us bring change and the social transformation we are looking for. And the social transformation has to do with the way and manner we carry out interventions that are related to humans, human welfare, human survival, security, safety. Of course, we know that in Castina State, you have a very young and vibrant government his best to ensure that the security architecture is revamped and changed. The way and manner we do our things, uh, particularly the, what has been holding the state back in the, in the time past, the governor is trying to bring about a change. And this change will only be possible when you have organizations that are making the that have the global best practice as its cardinal message that we are taking now we are talking about bringing humanitarian face into governance and bringing humanitarian face into governance means a radical change and a radical drifting from the way and manner we have been doing it have been issue the un human security concept details that the way to go about security it's not the traditional ways of carrying gun or arresting people and saying stop killing there are holistic and multi-dimensional approach to it this will include making sure that security is preventive in nature how is it going to be preventive in nature if you do not eat and you are hungry, and somebody comes to you and says, I'll pay you 5,000 naira, go to one local government and start killing people. You would not accept that offer when you do not have food, because a hungry man can do anything. And so, for it to be preventive in nature, we must make sure that we prioritize the welfare of the people, provide skills, provide opportunities for young people, and in providing opportunities for young people, there are various areas, including diversification in agriculture. And when you train people, you don't just train them and let them stay. You have to train them and provide opportunities for soft loans and grants, interest-free loans that can help them drive and put into motion the knowledge and skills that they have acquired. In that case, they can be able to have sustainable social economic uh, resilience and lifestyle that will help them run away from anybody luring them into carrying arms to commit 
the crimes of killing their fellow human beings. That is why we are here. And we are ready as an institute, like we have endorsed these states, to support and collaborate with the state government to ensure that we provide the needed capacity building for the NDAs and also for various relevant agencies and, and um, organizations, including the NGOs and the CSOs, other stakeholders, who do not know how best to go about some of this approach. It has its own global best practice. About training, the approach to go about sourcing for funding, we have to train people on grant proposal writing. The reason why some agencies and NDAs of government are redundant and are always relying on government allocations is because they do not have the capacity, the competence, and they do not have the information on who to give them the resources, how to drive this resource mobilization, how to raise grants for this various intervention. Like I did make reference, if you train somebody in soap making, bead making, tailoring, hairdressing, and all of that we're talking about as a value chain, and you do not give that person capital to start, the person will return back to the, the former position. And so it is imperative to train people on how best to source for this capital. There are, like the, the head of the UN team group will always say, there are 1,001 donor agencies scattered all over the world looking for noble initiatives where they can invest their resources. But if you do not know them, there is no way you can assess them. And if you do not have the right capacity, there is no way you can even go about approaching them. So we have to provide the capacities and also show you how to fish for yourself, show you the donor agencies that can support and collaborate with the state and provide some of these uh, capitals and support for the state, uh, for the young people. And again, we have talked about mainstreaming humanitarianism as a concept and a value system into our people, because that is part of the ways in which you can fight insecurity. How does that work? Value systems are gradually eroding us, where the way and manner we treat our fellow human beings. Until we go back to that era, where we can be able to take this orientation and sensitization to young people in primary school, in secondary school, in tertiary institutions, to understand dignity in humans, to understand that by the time you kill your fellow human beings, you have also offended the Almighty Allah. And the Almighty Allah does not teach us to take the life of anybody. So some of those cultures and value system that has eroded us, when you see somebody who is in need, what are you doing to salvage that problem? Because if you fail to train a child or support a child to go to school, tomorrow he will come against you or come after your children because of his own level of ignorance and the lack of education. Your child may be educated, but because that child, the other child never had the opportunity of acquiring that same education, so it does not have the same knowledge your child has, will come back to come and start attacking your children tomorrow. So for you to prevent that, you also need to provide that culture that says, be your brother's keeper, provide this orientation for these people, so that they will also know that they will know how to value human lives because every life counts. It is the popular uh, um, uh, philosopher, which we will call Kant, that says that the violation of the right of one person in one part of the world amounts to the violation of the right of everyone in all parts of the world. So on this note, we have uh, gotten the governor's uh, uh, affirmation to say that he is aligning with us and we are ready and uh, strategically positioned just as the able secretary to the government of the state has also re echoed and added his voice to what the governor has said that the state government will be aligning with us to ensure that we provide this support. And we, I, I made reference and I said that I don't know how many young people here in Castina have been able to get the opportunity to travel overseas with all expenses paid by the American government. We have agencies abroad 
international organizations abroad, including the American government themselves, that sponsor what we call the Nelson Mandela Young African Leadership Fellowship Program in Washington, D.C. We have young people from other states who benefit from such programs. And it helps them to acquire some knowledge and skills. When they come back, they receive small grants and they tell them, go back to their own state, be able to transfer the same knowledge on other young people. And this is the only way we can join hand with the state government to ensure that the state is evenly developed. And the Institute for Humanitarian Studies and Social Development with our partner, the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, is everly ready to throw our weight and support to what the state is doing. Inshallah.